Hello, I'm Larry Warren. Thank you for joining us on the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland have been sharing with you some special broadcasts by Dr. Jerry Savelle as a tribute to his life and ministry. His messages are still teaching the body of Christ how to live in the blessing and favor of the Lord every day. If you've missed any of these broadcasts from the past two weeks, I encourage you to go back and watch them on our website, kcm.org, or on KCM's Roku channel. Today's study is a strong finish to Brother Copeland and Brother Savelle's series, Settle in Your Heart. God's promises are for you, and become the winner in life that God created you to be. Would you join me again today in welcoming Jerry Savelle to this broadcast? Thank Jerry, you, sir. this has been a dynamite two weeks. Praise I God. I just have, I'm telling you, this We've had some fun, haven't we? Oh, <laughs> it's just so rich and so good. And I'm reminded again, um, like we were talking about yesterday, that the, the path, the light of the righteous just keeps getting brighter and brighter. Yeah. Amen. It does. And, and, and by, by saying that and seeing that, the brighter it gets, the more you see. Mm -hmm. And whatever you see in the Spirit, you can have it. That's right. Amen. That's right. Praise God. We've talked about the blessed life. We've talked about the good life. We've talked about the privileged life, which are all one and the same, what God designed yeah. for us. But I think on today's broadcast, we ought to go into Isaiah chapter 54. And here it talks about the winning life. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. And I think that's something that the body of Christ needs to become more aware of, perhaps than at any other time, because there's a lot of things going on in our world today. A lot of chaos, a lot of trouble out there, and people are hurting and suffering, and a lot of people don't know where to turn. Uh, a lot of people have given up and caved in and thrown in the towel, and, and they don't have to. God's people no, don't. don't have to give up. No, no matter don't. what Satan throws our way, thank God we have this promise from God. Isaiah 54, 17, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Yeah. Now the Amplified Bible says, triumph over opposition is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Triumph over opposition is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Right. That says that it is my covenant right to be triumphant, that I never have to settle for win a few, lose a few, that it is my covenant right that I'm triumphant Absolutely. always, hallelujah. Now, here's the reason why. You know, just like I just did, I started Isaiah 54, 17. Most people do. Let's back up to verse 16. I love this. This is God speaking. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. I have created the waster to destroy. Now, if you don't go study the rest of the Bible, it sounds like that God is saying, I'm the one who created the devil for the purpose of bringing destruction. Yeah, and that's but not that's accurate. But that's not what he's saying. No, that's not That's accurate. not what he's saying at all. God did create Lucifer. He wasn't known as the devil or Satan. When he created Lucifer, he was an anointed cherub. In his original state, he was the anointed cherub. He held a high-ranking position in the kingdom of God in heaven. But the Bible said pride was found in him and that he uh, decided that he wanted to exalt himself above the Most High God. And he, lured, he, he led uh, one-third of the angelic host against the throne of God. And when he did that, attempting to overthrow God, he learned firsthand why God's called Most High. Yeah, <laughs> he did. Yeah, and God kicked him out of heaven. And from that point, he became that old dragon, the serpent, yes, the devil, and Satan. Now, here's what God's actually saying. I am the one who created Lucifer. 
He became Satan, the destroyer. God's not saying, I created him for the purpose of destruction. No, because it said in the day that he was created, he was perfect. That's right. And iniquity was found in him. That's right. So he, didn't, he wasn't a destroyer when he was created. Satan became a destroyer by choice. Yes, he did. All right, trying to exalt, he, he wanted to be higher than the Most High God. But you don't get any higher than the no. Most High God. There's no such thing as most or high. It, most no. high is as high as it gets. Then he became the destroyer. And I believe this is what God is saying. You got to read verse 16. Then verse 17 becomes even more powerful. I believe what God is saying is this. I created Lucifer. He became Satan, the destroyer. And since I'm the one who created him, I take full responsibility for his actions. And I promise you, nothing he attempts to do against you will prosper. So none of these weapons will work. I'll none of them it. will work. <laughs> I'll see to it, praise God. You know, now, hey, that flows right in with the third chapter of the book of Malachi when he promised to the tither, you prove me in this. Mm -hmm. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Right, praise God. I, I created him, I'll handle him. Yeah. You just believe me. <laughs> Isn't yeah. that good? It, isn't that a good life when yeah, you know yes. that no matter what the devil tries to do, I'm covered by God. Yes, sir. That's a good life, uh, oh, man. That's is. a privileged life. That's it, a blessed life. It is. No weapon. Oh, and man. And then I love that amplified version that says, triumph over opposition is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. It's as much my right to live in total victory as it is my right to be saved and go to heaven. How You're supposed to. That's right. I'm supposed to be blessed. I'm supposed to be in victory. Yeah. Thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph. Amen. So that's the same thing in the New Testament. That they, they match right there, don't they? They do. God promised it here. Jesus bought and paid for it with his blood. And Paul picks up on it and says, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph. Now, the, the religious man is saying, there's no way you can win all the time. Oh. There's no way that, that uh, uh, you can live in total victory. Well, some, that person needs to go argue with God because he seems to think yeah. you can. Amen. You know, when I first started uh, Little League Baseball, I played baseball all my young life. And I'll never forget the first Little League team I went out for. Man, we practiced for weeks and weeks. Then we had our first game. And the coach lined us all up out there on the ball field, getting ready to play our first game. Man, we were excited. Bunch of little old boys. Man, we got our uniforms. We are ready to play. And that coach walks up there, lines us all up and says, Now, boys, it's not whether we win or lose today. It's how we play the game that counts. I think I was seven years old, and I thought that was the dumbest thing I ever heard. Yep. And it's yeah. still the dumbest thing. I thought, well, if it doesn't matter whether we win or lose, why would we do all that practicing for? Why didn't we just all show up? Nobody know each other. Nobody know their position. If it doesn't matter whether we lose or not, why do we practice? Well, it mattered to me. I went to the extent of showing up every day to practice. Losing's not fun. It mattered to me whether we won or lost. Championships are won. Uh, you go to championships if you win. You know, ask the, ask the, the, the lady who's been told that her little child is dying of some incurable disease. Ask her if winning or losing matters. Now, that same principle is applied to that situation yeah. by carnal-minded uh, preachers and, 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 and that, that whole religious uh, mindset. Well, you know, we win some, we lose some, and we never know, you just never know you just never know yeah. how these things turn out, but one thing we know, and da 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 da. It's all on that equalizing of the curse and the blessing. And that ain't right mm -hmm. because Jesus has given us victory over death, He has given us yeah. the triumph in life. Yeah. You play the game right, you win. That's right. Well, I discovered this about baseball. Why do teams lose? Errors. 
Yeah. They didn't play the game right. They didn't play the if game. you get those errors corrected, then you're going to win. And it's likely you'll win every time. That's the reason they call it errors. Because you, know, you didn't yeah. play the game That's right. That's right. You didn't you play know? it right. Well, praise God. This is our manual for playing the game right. Well, you play this one right. And I'm telling you, it's, and, and you come to a place in his favor that when you make an error, he said, hey, don't sweat it, kid. I'm right behind you. Yeah. <laughs> I love the fact that he's the umpire, too. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I get more than three strikes. <laughs> I get to bat until I hit yeah. one. <laughs> My father's the umpire this game. That's, That's right. Good, Praise man. God. <laughs> I love what uh, uh, the Apostle Paul tells us in Romans chapter 8. He says that if God be for us, then who can be against us? That's Romans 8, 31. And the message translation says, how can we lose? How can we lose when God is for us and not against us? Man, man. Now, tie that in. Go back to Isaiah 54 and start in verse 9 because I know <sighs> God gave you some great revelation there. <laughs> I'm telling you. He's for us, not against us. In that eighth verse, he said, in a little wrath, I hid my face from you for a moment. Now, when did that happen? In the 53rd chapter. Mm -hmm. That when, when Jesus took upon himself sin, sickness, fear, the whole curse. Yeah. That was that little moment. But with everlasting kindness. <clears throat> now, Jerry, this, this is a, a covenant word. Mm -hmm. It has to do with, with uh, the Hebrew word is hesed. It has to do with that covenant attitude. It is, um, it's if when I'm for you, everybody else better watch out mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm covenanted to you, little brother. Yeah. One, an enemy comes against you one way, I'll see that he runs seven. Mm -hmm. That's what God yeah, told what Abraham. Yeah. And he said, this that with everlasting <clears throat> covenant kindness will I have mercy on you, saith the Lord, your Redeemer. Yeah. So now who's talking here? The Redeemer. Hey, your Redeemer's talking. Listen up. This is as the waters of Noah unto me. Let me ask you something. Is there ever going to be Destruction of the earth again by water. Never. Never. It ain't going to happen. I promise. Made you stop oath. nearly any Christian on the street and ask him that yeah. question. If they don't know anything else, they know mm -hmm. about that. Yeah. Oh, no, man. And oh, they know no. that's what that rainbow is That's about. what that rainbow is for. And that's a covenant promise, wasn't it? Yeah. He put the bow in the sky to remind you this ain't never happening again. Right. But... Oh, Jerry, oh, Lord, <laughs> listen to what he said. This is as the waters of Noah unto me, for as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with you nor rebuke you, for the mountain shall depart and the hills be removed, but my Covenant grace shall not depart from you, and neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that has mercy on you. <laughs> God, I done preach me happy, man. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah. That means that God will never be mad at us again. Not again. Never. I don't care how bad you fouled it up. Yeah. You don't come to him and him say, I ain't having nothing to do with you, you, you jerk. Look what you did yesterday. Never. Never, 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 never. It ain't going to happen any more than the flood of water is going to destroy this earth. Mm. He swore it. Yeah. You come to him and you say, oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord, I missed it. Oh, God. He say, okay. All Got right. I forgive you. I cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Yeah. Oh, but Lord, you don't know what I did. He don't know what you did. Hey, when you confessed that sin, wasn't when he found out about it. That's right. And he's not mad about it. No. Why? He's already dealt with it. Everlasting kindness. Everlasting. Yeah. Hey, you're Everlasting never going to come to mercy. him. 
and he's got a mad on his face. Mm -hmm. He just said, come here, baby. Now, I know you fouled it up. Yeah, but you know, I mean, I killed my best dog, man. I mean, look yeah. what I did. Oh, no, no. No, uh-uh. No, no, no. The scripture said he's faithful and he's just to forgive us and to cleanse us of oh. all unrighteousness. That's right. So on that, if he cleansed me, when? When I confess that. Mm -hmm. If he cleansed me of, from all unrighteousness, what's left? Righteousness. Yeah. Amen. All that's left is righteousness. That's it. And he said, hey, baby, come here. Come here now. Let daddy talk to you a minute. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jerry. Isn't that good? Oh, I tell you, it's Devil so rich. They were trying to tell people, well, you don't qualify for this blessed life they're talking about. You don't qualify to live this good life he's talking about. Oh, yes, you do. Yes, sir. All you got to do is make oh, Jesus yes, Lord sir. of your life. Oh, yes, And sir. you qualify just yes, as sir. much as Kenneth Copeland or Jerry Savelle. I don't He'll care what you. you've done. He'll hear you just as quick. That's right. Jesus said, anyone comes unto me, I will for no reason cast him out. Mm -hmm. I was preaching in uh, maximum security prison one time. And there was an old boy sitting right in front of me. We were in the prison chapel. And uh, he was just what, just closest to me to the edge, the edge of that table there. And uh, I'm telling you, I, I got into some of this right here. And Jerry, he couldn't take it any longer. He jumped and he screamed. You'd have thought somebody stuck him in. He mm -hmm. jumped and he screamed. He went to running around this room. Ah, he's just, he did, whoa, God. And he up and three turns around the room and fell right in front of me and said, oh, Brother Copeland, Brother Copeland, put your hands on me, put your hands on me. I laid my hands on him. Oh, Jesus, he just a going. And he said, Oh, I'm going to preach this gospel, brother. He said, I want to preach this. Well, I, I was talking to the chaplain after and he kind of got mm -hmm. settled down and they, they uh, got, got him back in his seat there. I said, tell me about him. I said, uh, you know, how much, how much time is he doing? He said, 700 years. <laughs> so no, I didn't need to ask any patient. He'd been ugly somewhere down the yeah, line. Yeah, right, real ugly. But see, I mean, God blessed that old boy. Yeah. I mean, the word got in him. Why? Mm -hmm. He ain't the man that did the crime. Yeah. That old man died. That old man died. Yeah. And he got a revelation of the fact that God wasn't mad at him. Yeah. God wasn't holding it against him. Now, uh, whether God does a miracle and gets him out of prison, which has been done has before. Been done. Or if he preaches in that prison the rest of his life, God sees it as a job well done. I had an old boy in my Bible school one time, spent 21 years in prison, most of it in the hole. And God got him out and he <laughs> graduated from my Bible school and went to preach the gospel all over the world, praise God. Isn't that a marvelous thing? And he was in for life. And mm -hmm. God got him out 21 years. Praise he had, a, had a, a, a group of Christians come through there witnessing. And this one lady, you know who I'm talking about, Bear and Dove Morgan. Yes, I do. And old Bear, they called him Mad Dog when he's in prison, you know. And, and Dove come in there witnessing with a bunch of church people, you know. And the Lord pointed Bear out and said, there's your future husband. <laughs> and I mean, this guy's bad. Oh, he yeah. is mean. I yeah. mean, he, he's, he's in for life. And God super, and she got him led to the Lord, you know. God supernaturally got him out of there. And the first thing they did was come to my Bible schools. Graduated there, went to preaching all over the place, praise God. Well, you remember he came in in a morning service of the motorcycle rally yeah. that we were having here on, on the mm -hmm. property. And he walked in there that morning. I was speaking at the morning service that morning. This was one of the first rallies we had. Yeah. And we still had the, the meeting set up out there in front of that small hangar before we had the big one. And they'd set this flatbed trailer up out there. And I, I was just about to walk up the steps on it to be able to preach. And he and Dove walked in. Well, I didn't know who they were. Mm -hmm. And... He walked over to me, 
I mean, he was just zero yeah. in on me. And he said, I just got out. I just did, what was it, 21 years? 21 years. I just did 21 years. I came straight here. Mm -hmm. And he had this pendant that he had made for me. And he said, I come to bring this to you. Because I want you to know how much I love God. And he put yeah, that on me. Yeah. And he just started crying. He, just, he yeah. was a bear of a man. He was. And he just came, oh, bear so tender. He just, he just couldn't. Oh, God, here he went. Oh, man. And then here I went. Oh, oh yeah. you know. You know one, one, oh, one day so at the much. Bible school, the Lord told me to give him a brand new Harley I just bought. And, uh, <laughs> or I'd just been blessed with. I, had, I didn't have, I don't think, 500 miles on it. And uh, so I told my uh, director at the school, I said, have everybody, have everybody out in the parking lot when I pull up there. And I rode that brand new Heritage Softail Classic in there. And I said, uh, I've been teaching you guys about faith, about seed time and harvest. Now I'm going to demonstrate it. And I said, Bear and Dove, come up here. I said, I'm giving you this bike and I want you to use it as a tool for evangelism. Old Bear just started crying. And when he quit crying, he said, Brother Jerry, it's the first Harley I ever owned that didn't steal. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? He left on that thing and went to the, to the grocery store while Dove went in to get something. He sat out there still crying over that bike. And some guy walked up and saw him. And he said, sir, are you all right? And he said, yeah, I'm all right. And he said, what you crying about? He said, God just gave me this motorcycle. He started witnessing to him. His first convert on that motorcycle was a backslidden preacher. <laughs> and and led him to the Lord. I hadn't heard about that. <laughs> my, my, you know, my, something? my, my. Yeah, it's something. Yeah. Yes, sir, it's something. And talk about a man who began to enjoy the good life. I, I looked up one day and I'm, I'm preaching in Wales. I'm in Newport, Wales. And I look and there's Bear out in the audience. I'm thinking, how in the world did he get over here? Now, 21 years in prison, you don't get a passport anymore after that. You know, you That's don't, right. You don't yeah. get to, that privilege anymore. That's right. And God was showing him that he was indeed a new creation. And that old man had died and passed away, and God got him a passport because somebody over there asked him to come give his testimony. And he Isn't was enjoying it? newness of life. Now you think about that. Yeah, isn't that something? Oh, praise God. I'm telling you, God is so oh, good, mm, and he mm, wants his mm. blessings and his benefits manifesting in our life every day. Father, we thank you this morning, and we give you praise. And we thank you that this building once more for one whole week will be a sanctuary for people from all over the world. And we thank you today that this building is full of the Holy Ghost and power from on high. And we praise you and we honor you today. And we pray these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. How do you have a vision for your future when you just need to get through today? When the dreams you once had seem out of reach, is there a way to rebuild? The Bible says that God has only good plans for you, that His goodness and mercy are coming after you. It's when you begin to understand His goodness that you can begin to receive it. Get the Goodness of God MP3 series by Gloria Copeland and grow your capacity to see the love, prosperity, healing, all the good things of God in your life. God is good. There's not anything that is more faith building than to know the Father and to know His goodness. When it seems like the world around you is being torn apart, you can remain firm in hope. Become a living, walking example of the love that God has poured out to mankind. As you join your faith in God's promises with steadfastness to stand on His Word, there's nothing that can stop His blessing from taking over your life. Order your free copy of The Goodness of God MP3 series by Gloria Copeland. The motivation of God's heart is His love for you. 
Receive all the benefits that God desires to pour out on you through His goodness. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395. Offer good for 60 days. If you're outside the U.S., shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. God created you to be a winner in life. That's why he's giving you his word to show the way to victory in every situation. For example, to be a winner in your finances, God's giving you promises to lead you into the financial abundance he wants you to enjoy. In Matthew 6, Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added to you. One of the ways you can seek after God's kingdom is by investing into the one thing that matters the most to God, people. People are precious to God. He wants them to live in complete health, joy, peace, and abundance in every area of life. At Kenneth Copeland Ministries, we share that same love God has for people. We know it's the power of God's word that sets people free. So they live the blessed life God's planned for them. Our mandate is to preach the uncompromised message of faith on every available voice. Every seed you invest into this ministry is helping send that life-changing word of God into people's lives around the world. Because you're invested in what matters most to God, then he promised to make sure you're well supplied. Partners and friends, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, thank you for your faithful support to this ministry. Together, we're reaching the world with the truth of God's word and teaching believers who they are in Christ. Before we go, I want to bless your offering today. Father, you bless us going in and you bless us going out. You bless us as heirs according to the promise. In the name of Jesus, I declare the Lord of the harvest increase every sower more and more. I decree them blessed by the blessing of Abraham Amen. Now, if you're not a partner and want to join our team helping to preach the truth of God's word that makes people free, please visit our website, kcm.org slash partner and discover the benefits of covenant partnership today. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, this is Brother Larry reminding you, God loves you, we sure love you, and Jesus is Lord. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland would like to thank you for praying and sowing into Kenneth Copeland Ministries. We are believing with you for your abundant harvest. To sow your financial seed, you can text the letters KCM to 36609, go online to kcm.org slash give, or call 800-600-7395. Your giving has helped send the word of faith from the top of the world to the bottom and all the way around the middle.